the presidential candidates are getting ready to face off for a last debate. But what do the voters think? We'll have a live report from the auditorium at UNLV. And the Dodgers have a shot. It's been 28 years since they reached the World Series. We all know college students don't get enough sleep. We'll have a sneak peek at some of the interesting places on campus to catch up with your Z's. If you thought it was boot season, stay tuned to find out if this heat is here to stay. All this and much more on OC News. Welcome and thank you for joining us at OC News. I'm Christian Egan. And I'm Raylan Taylor. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. The final face-off between the presidential candidates is less than an hour away. The Republican nominee Donald Trump goes into the debate with the weakest political position of the election. What's changed? Traditionally, GOP strongholds states like Arizona, Utah, Florida and Nevada have all moved to either battleground to leaning Democrat, leaning Democrat. The debate is being held at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. While most of us will be watching the debate at home, several students at UNLV were lucky enough to get a ticket to tonight's showdown. Our own Sarah Fenton talked to a student who will be in the audience. We're here with David. He is a grad student at UNLV for communications and he won the lottery to attend the debate tonight. David, what is the mood like on campus right now? It's crazy. I mean, I might be able to show you there are a ton of people in the waiting room of all kinds, some students, some supporters, um, all sorts of people. And it's just, you can feel the excitement in here. People are anxious. We're waiting to see what's going to happen. And are you in the auditorium right now? Is this where you'll be tonight? I will be in a couple minutes. Okay. Right now, we're just waiting in the waiting room. Everybody here has already been screened by security. We have a specific ticket and seating assignment. So we're just waiting really for the auditorium to open. Okay. And speaking of security, what is security like tonight? Um, it was. It's extremely um, strict, I would say. So coming into this, we had to... Sorry, we were screened by security. We had to come in because uh, th through our name and suit number, or whatever it is that your association was, um, once we got our tickets, we had to shuttle into the building. So there is no one getting in here um, just driving by or driving into, I'm sorry, driving into it. So in order to get into the building, everybody has to be shuttled in from a separate street. Um, that was pretty intense. There's security everywhere. I saw some people dressed, some security dressed up as normal people, but I could see their earpieces and, you know, uh, you know, watching everybody and everything going on. There's security everywhere. Yeah, speaking of the roads, I heard there's road, road closures that are going on, buildings that are closed, um, and reporters on campus. Can you talk about, is that making anything harder for you to access any parts of campus right now? Yeah, well, the entire campus in general was shut down pretty much. A lot of the buildings that we usually have access to were fenced off for the debate. And even driving in here to the debate as uh, uh, having access with a ticket and stuff was difficult enough. I had to drive around because many streets were closed. They put containers shutting off, uh, down pretty much the Thomas and Matt is where it's happening. And they kind of have to really guide you in it. unless you have a ticket or unless you are supposed to be here there is no way that you're getting past security that's crazy and david why did you want to be in the audience tonight sorry what was that why why did you want to be in the audience tonight um well there's this is a, a, a historic night sorry can you hear me yeah yeah we're good okay i lost um, it's a historic night. This debate is going to change pretty much the course of the country, really. I think it has a big impact, especially for Nevada. Uh, we are a swing state, and I consider myself 
a, an immigrant and an American. And for me, it means a whole lot to be able to hear what both candidates have to say about the future of America. Uh, regardless of my background, I think we share a common future. So uh, that's one thing. And I just think as a student, you know, we have to be involved. We have to be uh, knowledgeable to be able to make an informed vote. And I think it's it's a great opportunity. I don't, I don't know that I'd be able to uh, forget this for a long time. Awesome. Well, I hope you get everything you want out of it tonight. Thank you again, David, for joining us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Will tonight's debate be enough to sway the undecided vote? We have Miranda at the TSU talking to students and faculty to see what they have to say. The number of students that actually register to vote, um, I hear it's not very high. And then so basically if they're not, there's not that many people who are even following the debate. And I don't think that they'd actually um, make a decision, let alone if they're not even registered. And for someone like me who hasn't really been keeping up with the presidential debates, I think if I tuned into the third one, um, I'd be able to catch enough to persu persuade me to vote for somebody um, over the other. Uh, I think a lot of people have already made up their minds. I don't think the debate tonight is going to make any difference to sway people one way or another. <laughs> um, and so I just don't think that the debate is going to affect the vote tonight um, because they aren't really saying anything that has a plan for the future. So we don't really know. Yes and no, depending on the age group. Uh, the older generation is still probably, like, they'll probably think to vote after watching this. And the younger generation, it, for those that don't really keep up, I think they would just choose who is, like, the lesser of two evils. This late in the game, it's possible that more people will join, but I think for the most part, like, people already know what they're going to do or if they're going to vote for. Like, the debate is where people just kind of, like, get more frustrated or, like, hateful at the other party rather than, uh, you know, maybe swaying which side they want to vote for. So whether or not you are undecided or full-fledged ready to go, um, it's important that you tune in to the final debate tonight. And there will be a viewing party right here downstairs of the TSU in the pub. From Cal State Fullerton, I'm Rana Medina for OC News. Back to you guys in the studio. The stage is set for the final presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And there is much for these two candidates to talk about tonight. Raquel Navarro has more details of the rundown of tonight's debate. So what can we expect tonight? Final opportunity for voters to compare Trump's candidacy and Clinton side by side. Fox News anchor Chris Wallace will moderate the 90-minute event, which will be divided into six 15-minute segments. The topics are debt and entitlements, immigration, the economy, the Supreme Court, foreign hotspots, and each candidate's fitness to serve as president. Clinton and Trump will have two minutes apiece for their answers. They'll also get to respond to each other, and Wallace can use any leftover time to dig deeper into individual responses. Almost as corrupt as crooked Hillary Clinton is the media right back there. Donald Trump has been on the attack against the Clintons, the media, and what he claims is a rigged, rigged election system. Trump's numbers have slumped in the wake of multiple allegations of sexual misconduct, which he denies. The latest CNN polls, an average of five major national surveys, shows an eight-point deficit for Trump at 39% and Clinton at 47%. Despite their advantage, the Clinton campaign is exercising caution and has been preparing for days. Trump has reportedly been practicing at mock debates this time around. There's no telling how many people will tune in tonight, but a record-breaking 84 million people watched the first presidential debate. The second had a viewership of 66 million viewers. People go to Vegas to see a good, intense, dramatic fight. In a few hours, the candidates are bound to give them one. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Raquel, and I cannot wait to see that debate. But the question remains, will we need to bring out our umbrellas or sunscreen? Imani Jackson has your weather forecast. That's right. Well, Ray Lynn, it looks like we might need a little bit of both coming into this week. And let's take a look at our current temperatures right now. As you can see, we're at 95, 94 degrees with a low 62, and our humidity levels are at 12%, and our sunrise came in at 7 a.m., and it should be setting at 6, 12 a.m. 
So let's take a look at the five-day forecast. So as, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to need a little bit of both. We're going to need those umbrellas and some sunscreen. In the beginning of the week, you can see we're going to need that sunscreen. Coming into Thursday, there's 96, a high 96 degrees with a low 60 degrees. Friday coming in with a 92 degrees and a low 59. But coming into Monday, you can see that we're going, going to see some rain with a high 75 and a low 57 degrees. Now let's take a look at our national forecast. So over here in Los Angeles, we're seeing a 92 degrees. That's our current temperatures right now. It's a little warm out there, actually a lot of warm today. And taking over to Atlanta, you can see that they're at 87 degrees. It's kind of warm in that area and Seattle they're experiencing some cloudy temperatures so let's take a look at tonight's national forecast so Los Angeles we're going to be at a low 63 and Atlanta they're at 63 degrees tonight Seattle they're going to actually be experiencing some rain they were a bit cloudy earlier today and now they're going to be experiencing those um those rains tonight and that's all for your weather forecast let's take it on back to the studio the Dodgers are trying to do what they haven't done for 28 years make it into the World Series <laughs> we'll have a live report from Chavez Ravine and to what extremes do students go through just to squeeze in a few minutes of sleep this and more when we come back It's what powers our journey to reach unimaginable heights. It fosters a sense of yearning to create, explore, and soar. It strengthens our will to climb to the top. It's the bedrock of our conviction that nothing's impossible. It transforms us and sets us free to thrive and build lives of purpose. Titan Pride is at the heart of who we are. A major company is making a huge change to their dietary guidelines. Yesenia Gomez has more on the story. Yes, that's right. If you haven't heard yet, Pepsi is cutting their calories. PepsiCo has announced that it will aggressively cut sugars and calories in dozens of its products. It's promising that at least two-thirds of its drinks will have 100 calories or less by 2025. It'll be interesting to see how the main competitor, Coca-Cola, will respond. Maybe some healthy competition? So, how much are dietary supplements really helping you? A new survey shows that a lot of Americans are sold on supplements, no matter what their doctors say. Kim Hutchison has more in today's Health Minute. The National Institutes of Health spent more than $250 million to study whether dietary supplements really improve your health and for the most part couldn't find any significant benefit. But a new report from the Journal of the American Medical Association says most Americans they surveyed still use supplements at least once a month. Although their popularity has leveled off in the last decade, the study shows the vast majority of dietary supplements are being used without a doctor's recommendation. While fewer people are taking antioxidants like vitamin C, there's an increase in the use of supplements like probiotics and lycopene. And the number of people who take fish oil supplements has grown nine times since the year 2000. The journal says it looks like the popularity of many supplements is tied closely to how much they're advertised, more than whether they have proven benefits for your health. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Talk about incredible ad campaigns. I guess vitamins and fish oil won't increase your health after all. But there are some major health contaminations happening across the United States that may affect some of its residents. In Chicago, more than 450 water fixtures were removed due to high levels of brain damaging lead. In a statement, the Chicago Park District said, quote, ensuring the health and safety of all park patrons and staff is a top priority, end quote. 
Hopefully, none of the patrons or staff who drink the water will have future health issues. In other news, a Democratic National Convention tour bus is in big trouble with the State Environmental Protection Division. Mike Robbins, a Georgia resident, captured a DNC tour bus illegally dumping human waste into a storm drain. I've got my cell phone out and I'm getting taking pictures at this because I don't care who you are, that's just wrong. The DNC since apologized for the incident saying, quote, this was an honest mistake and we apologize to the Lawrenceville community for any harm we may have caused, end quote. Well, that's all for me in health. Now back to our anchors. Are you getting enough sleep or are you part of the 38% that doesn't? Valeria Morgia has more of the story. Oh, hey, sorry, I was just taking a nap. I didn't get enough sleep yesterday. Did you know that 48% of Americans don't get enough sleep? Let's go see how much sleep college students get. Statistics show that 70% of adolescents are sleep deprived, 40% of adults sleep less than seven hours, and one in three Americans don't get enough sleep. I usually get around uh, probably like five, six hours of sleep at uh, the most. Um, sometimes I do sleep on campus, yeah, I'll probably like, most of the time I sleep in my car. And either at my car or at the Mahalo, uh, like the fifth floor where it's like quiet. I realized I needed to get more sleep when I started college actually and when I figured that I had to study more for my tests. What I do at night to get a better night's rest is actually to listen to some music to kind of calm me down after my day. I think after college I, I will get a lot more sleep. Uh, I think uh, hopefully I'll have a job by then. So hopefully I won't get too much sleep, but I do think that for the most part I will get more sleep. Uh, throughout the day I do take naps. Uh, it's, uh, I just usually get home and I just knock out. It's not really like an intentional thing, but yeah. More than one half of the U.S. population has taken a nap within the past seven days. The frequent napping suggests that a large number of Americans need more sleep. This has been Valeria Murguia in Fullerton reporting for OC News. The Titan Student Union is new and ready for students. We will go out live to the TSU to show you some of the new improvements. I can't wait to see that and find out which judge will be returning to The Voice next season. We'll be right back. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen and I am your dividend. The best assignment today for a story has to be the Dodgers. We sent Alan Huerta to find out if our beloved team will continue their winning ways. Alan is live at Dodger Stadium. Alan? Hey, thanks, guys. Like you said, we're live outside here of Dodger Stadium. Game for a big game for both teams. And as you can see, the lines are still long to get in in typical L.A. fashion. Game four is underway already. We're in the bottom of the first. The game is still scoreless, and it's a big game for both teams. As for the Dodgers, if they get a win tonight... They'll be one win away from the World Series appearance since 1988. And as for the Cubs, well, they haven't won a World Series since 1908, an 108-year drought. So they're definitely going to want to win Game 4, which is a must-win for them tonight. The Dodgers have Julio Urias on the mound, the 20-year-old who won Game 5 of the NLDS to get here to the NLCS. And as for the Cubs, well, they have the veteran John Lackey on the mound. Like I said, the game is still scoreless and still going on. You hear the crowd right here cheering right now. Expect that I hear that all night, as the Dodger fans have been waiting for this for a very long day. We'll be here all night to give you guys more on the Dodger game. But the Dodger game isn't the only baseball game that was going on tonight. 
as the Indians, the Indians look to clinch a trip to the World Series in their Game 5 meeting against the Blue Jays today. They received some big help with solo homers from Carlos Santana and Coco Chris. The Indians finished with the game with a 3-0 win, sending them to the World Series and starting the party in Cleveland. As you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers won the championship, and now the Indians are looking to do the same. So make sure to stay tuned to the Dodger game as we can see another exciting moment from Cal State Fullerton alum Justin Turner, who homered for the Dodgers yesterday in Game 3. That'll do it for us here at Dodger Stadium. OC News fans, keep make sure to keep watching the Dodger game as who knows if the Dodgers are going to win tonight and be one step closer to the World Series. Guys, back to you guys. Go Dodgers! Okay, music vanguards are making a big comeback into the music world. Carolina tells us more. Eminem is back at it again. The rapper dropped a surprise political rap earlier today and it touches on multiple controversial topics like the GOP candidate and police brutality. In typical Eminem fashion, the seven minute song titled Campaign Speech includes explicit lyrics as the rapper puts Trump on blast. The song conveniently dropped on the same day as the last political debate, putting his name high again with a great taste for his new album. President Barack Obama's final state dinner was last night, and let's just say I'm a little jealous I wasn't invited. Gwen Stefani performed at the White House in front of a star-studded audience that included Frank Ocean, Giorgio Armani, and Rachel Ray. Also present was Gw Gwen's boyfriend, Blake Shelton, with whom she shared the stage for their song, Go Ahead and Break My Heart. Gwen also visited the Oval Office earlier in the morning with her three sons, Kingston, Zuma, and Apollo Rossdale. There, they posed for pictures with the state dinner's guest of honor, Italy's Prime Minister Matteo Renzi and his wife, Agnes Landini, and of course, Barack and Michelle Obama. In other exciting news for Gwen, yesterday NBC's Today announced that she will be returning for season 12 of The Voice with Alicia Keys, Adam Levine, and Blake Shelton. This season will air in February 2017. President of Alternative and Reality Group at NBC Entertainment, Paul Talegdi, said in a statement, quote, We can't ex wait to experience the unique chemistry and energy Gwen, Alicia, Blake, and Adam will bring to season 12. And for all you Miley Cyrus fans, don't worry, the pop star will be back for season 13, premiering in the fall of 2017. As for the rest of the coaches for season 13, that's still a mystery. And another surprise in the music industry, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 2017 nominees were officially announced yesterday. The list includes Tupac, Janet Jackson, Journey, and Pearl Jam. To be eligible for nomination, an artist or band must have released their first or single album at least 25 years prior to the year of nomination. So this year marks the first time Pearl Jam and Tupac are eligible. Fans can cast their vote until December 5 by going onto rockhall.com. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 2017 inductees will be announced in December, and the induction ceremony will be held at Barclays Center in Brooklyn next April and broadcast on HBO. Shailene Woodley pleaded not guilty to charges of criminal trespass and engaging in a riot today. If you guys weren't aware just yet, the Faulkner Stars actress was arrested last Monday after protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline. Shailene was recording the protest live on Facebook, and the video has already gained almost 5 million views. In the video, Woodley said, quote, I don't know if you guys just heard me, but I was walking back to the RV, which is right there, so that we can go back to camp peacefully, and they grabbed me by the jacket and said that I was not allowed to continue. And they had giant guns and batons and zip ties, and they're not letting me go, end quote. Shailene's case currently has no set court date. That's it for entertainment. Back to you in the studio. It's finally official. The new and improved Titan Student Union officially opens tomorrow. The landmark on campus is better than ever after a year-long, multi-million dollar facelift. We go, now to, we go now live to Sarah Fenton, who is in the TSU to show us some of the highlights. Sarah? Thanks guys, the new TSU expansion has ended early and the grand opening is tomorrow. But before that grand opening, we have a recap of what's been built inside. On the inside of the new TSU, students are already join, enjoying it and there will be a new Starbucks in there as well. But the grand central piece of it all is the grand staircase in the middle of it where students can sit down, plug in their phones and computers and enjoy their time in between classes. 
Well, if you want to see more of the TSU and see what's inside, you can come for the grand opening tomorrow between 1 and 4 p.m. There will be free food and a ribbon cutting. It's something you won't want to miss. For OC News, I'm Sarah Fenton. That does it for OC News. This is Christian Egan. And this is Raylan Taylor. We would be thrilled to have you follow us on we'll social media. You can find us under the OC pretty, News pretty, CSUF pretty, handle. Pretty, pretty, Make sure to tune in next week for all the latest news, stories. Star, Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.